Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to another plugin knowledge session. In this session, we're going to have a look at a plugin called Levels by Mastering the Mix. So, this is a fairly simple plugin, nice, clean interface, and it's supposed to assist you with making sure that you get your levels right. You can use it in mixing on your mix bus, or you can use it during mastering. Uh, again on your end of the chain to make sure that you aren't uh, losing too much dynamics or pushing it too hard during mixing or mastering whichever yeah, you can load presets to suit the um, style that you're going for so you know you've got some mixing presets and you've got some mastering presets and you can customize all of those to set the different values that you prefer so if you like to uh, mix or master a bit hotter than most and actually get that crunch and that distortion then you can set this up to suit your style or the opposite you can go lower if you prefer to have things more open so as i said it's quite a simple um, plug-in it's not very expensive but it can be quite useful if you like to have those sort of visual ideas and controls of where your levels are and things like that. And if you don't have anything else to do it, then it's definitely worth having a look at because you may like the approach that they take. So let's uh, get into it and check it out. Okay, so here we have a song and I have basically placed this plugin levels on the mix bus and this is the layout we have. So as I said, it's a very simple looking layout but it can also be a little bit sort of confusing if you don't know what each of the controls are. But you've got four sort of spaces here, okay? So you've got headroom, stereo field, bass space, and dynamics. Okay, so when we first load the plugin, we get this view here. Now, if we go to any of these other sections, we can get back to it by just clicking on the levels button there. So the theory behind this is these four sections here, if they're green, everything is good. If they're red, something is wrong. Now, wrong is obviously based on its interpretation of wrong and also the settings. So as you can see here, you can customize the settings to suit your style and adjust these presets. So they come standard with presets here. You've got mastering presets for each of these types. So CD, Club, Composer, MFIT, SoundCloud, Streaming, and YouTube. And each one of those is going to adjust these values here. So you can obviously adjust those and save them to suit what you prefer and what you believe is to be the correct settings. You then have some mixing presets. So if we have it on a mix as opposed to in mastering, then we're looking at going quite a lot lower. So, and again, we've got a few different settings here, which is then also taking off different values and it turns true peak off because we're not hitting it so hard that we don't even need to concern ourselves with true peak. Whereas in the mastering setting, we do because we are hitting right or close to zero or literally on zero. So let's just put our settings into mix balance for the moment. And let's just play the audio and let's see what this does. So straight away we get a red thing in our dynamic range here, so it's indicating we have a problem. But we have a few simple controls as well. So we have a mono button. Quite handy for us to do our mono compatibility and check our levels in that. We've also got these controls on the side here. So we can listen to the left or right individually. 
Now, if we go across to our headroom setting here, you can see we have green and we have red and we have our meter here for the uh, reading. So each one of these bars is supposed to be one dB. And as you would have seen in here, we're trying to keep our peak down to minus six dB. So we're sitting at minus seven, so we're all good there. We can click this peak here to reset it. And we can even switch over to LUFS here if we want to. We got so we've got our short term meter and our integrated reading. So if you prefer to do your readings in uh, LUFS, then you can, otherwise you can go straight back to your peak meter here. And you can see we are not hitting our 6 dB, so we're all good in that regard. So we have a stereo field option here. So again, if we play the, our mix, If we had a single line going up and down, our mix would be in a mono. If uh, the wider it spreads, the more stereo field we are going over. On heaven's bright shore. On heaven's bright shore. And you'll see here showing our balance. So we're sitting around the center, but fluctuating left and right. And this is our correlation meter on the side here. So we've got a minus one, plus one. This is determining our phase. If we're in the positive, so from zero to plus, that means that everything's good. If we start to go down here, that means we've got some severe phase issues. And if we turned this into a mono track, then we would probably start losing some instrumentation and having some weird phasing effects. So we wanna make sure our correlation is up here. We've also got a low pass here, so you can see that now we can concentrate and have a listen to our low and make sure it's not too wide, whether it's sitting in the center, it's fairly mono there, you can see it's not spreading out too much. Phase is good. And over here we've got our dynamic range and you'll see here our dynamic range is hitting 10.6 by this, so let's just try that again. On heaven's bright shore. So this is supposed to indicate the fluctuation between the peaks and the short-term LUFS. So that's what this reading here. So we've got a 10 and the reason it is red is because they wanted a dynamic range of 11. So if I had have gone and changed my settings to loud, yes, definitely loud, then you'll find that we'll probably stay in the green. So maybe we could have had some more dynamics in this song and not be so contained, but it can depend on the instrumentation you have and everything else. And our last setting here is bass space. Now, as it indicates here, it's saying mute your kick and bass. And the reason for this is because it's going to actually show you uh, if there's any l very low bass elements here Okay, and the point of muting the kick and the bass, well, their theory anyway, is to uh, determine if there's any other instruments that are leaking into the bass range where the kick and the bass should sit and might be muddying up your mix or confusing your mix and creating too much low end. 
And so if you find that, so you mute your kick in your bass, if you find that you've got low end leaking into there, then what you need to do is individually go through and mute different instruments, channels, buses, whatever else, until you find where the problem is. And I guess this is useful if you have a listening environment where you really can't hear the low end very well. And you want to make sure that it is clear and it's not muddied up by any other instrumentation, but you can't hear it because you don't have uh, a very good listening environment or you're listening on little uh, headphone buds or something like that. And you just want a visual check of it. So this can be handy for that just to confirm that there is no low end that you're not hearing, but it's actually there. So, you know, even if I don't, if I don't mute, You'll see we've got tons of low end. But that's because we do have, uh, we have a bass. Do we have a kick? No, we don't even have any drums in this song. Okay, so if I mute the bass, as I've just done. So you'll see there's a little bit of low end there. Not really anything over here. So that's good there because, you know, I, I would be quite happy with that. Our levels are very low on the low end there. Um, now, obviously, if you've got stuff up here in the 160, 120, you have to make your own judgment on your music. That may be fine. If you've got no bass and no kick in your song and you're hitting 40 hertz, again, depends on the genre. When I say bass, you need to work out your bass elements. You may have a synth that you're using as a bass, it doesn't have to be necessarily a kick or a bass. It has to be your bass element. So whatever you've defined to be a bass element is what you should mute to make sure that your non-bass elements are not causing unwanted bass. Okay, so that's the point of this setting here. All right, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually set this over to a mastering setting. We're going to have true peak set here. But I need to sort of trick this into thinking we're mastering it. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to drop the volume of our mix so we don't blow our ears out. So I'm just putting a limiter on and we're going to... I'll leave True Peak off for the moment. Let's see what we can actually get out of this. Okay, let's go. Let's just have a look at luffs here. Alright, so... We can push this pretty hard. You can see the limit is quite heavy. So you can see here our true peak is actually going above zero. So 0 0.4. It's what it's indicating. Okay, so with the true peak setting to off, we're sitting at about zero. Right, just for that little section there. And if we turn the true peak on, point one. So it's basically indicating that the true peak 
is actually going a little bit above zero. So we are sort of clipping the top of the zero there. So it gives you an indication of our true peak detection there, which is which is handy to know if you don't want to clip it. You know, you want to get your, your uh, meter down lower than that. Okay, so that would be the advantage of dropping your ceiling down to say minus one. See, we're clearly staying away from the zero now. And even if I push it harder, so our true peak is going a little bit higher, and we, we would be clipping more if I didn't have this ceiling set to minus one. So if I had to set that to zero. we start again going 0.3 over zero so we would be distorting and clipping a little bit on low quality audio converters 0.4 even okay but reducing our level down to minus one gets us nicely under there and gives us enough space to allow for that true peak to happen. So you can see our headroom is obviously a little bit too much here. We, uh, if we go over to our luffs meter here, On bright shore. our integrated luffs is minus seven, minus six. We are really crushing the dynamics out of this now. If we have a look at our dynamics very red six I even saw a five before DR I would definitely not master to this level so let's let's reset these and let's back off our our uh, limiter here Get a bit more. Okay, so we've got a bit too much now. Still a bit too much. Obviously, you'd want to find the loudest part of your song and work out what your maximum level you want to go to is. So that's sitting there nicely. It's going a little bit below 10 DR. That's, that's a nice setting if you uh, are not into uh, loudness wars, but uh, you can obviously uh, push this a bit far. So if you look here, if we go to club, we go from CD, we go from a nine, dynamic range to five. So we could really push that a lot. But since everything's streaming these days, you wanna also check out your streaming services here. So streaming, it's down to a nine again. Our LUFS there is a lot lower than the actual CD. So dynamic range can be the same, but our uh, actual uh, LUFS and everything. and and. And that's because streaming services are going to turn down your mix if it's too loud. So our DR is going to be good. What about our loves? So our integrated loudness by this is too loud.
So we would have to go a bit lower to get that. But anyway, that's an example there. We're not actually here to master this song. So that's what you would do in mastering. So obviously that's quite handy to have that display up, see your dynamic range, make your adjustments, get your levels to where you want, and check that out. And you can obviously do some of these tricks. I mean, you can't really do the bass space on mastering. You could check your stereo field, your headroom and dynamics. The bass space there really is more of a mixing thing. So... Uh, unless you're working on stems in your mastering sessions. So there you go. There's the plugin levels by Mastering the Mix. As I said, fairly cheap plugin, very simple, and uh, does what it's meant to do. So if you're looking for a, a plugin to, uh, to make sure that you're getting your levels right and you're not squashing your mix or your master too much and just want those uh, visual cues for that, then... Definitely check this out, try it out, see if you like it, see if it suits your workflow and your style. Um, some people prefer other types of meters. This, you know, obviously has a simple view. It doesn't have great detail or anything like that, but it clearly does show you what it believes is right and wrong, and you can customize your presets to suit your style, as I already said. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.